I was gonna go on a whole window rant about how dumb I thought the outrage off of one trailer was. I was gonna hit a lot of points that I saw a lot of people were pushing that just made no sense whatsoever and comes off like everyone just forgot how things work and how Saints Row is for the sake of just being angry. But I changed my mind. Because when I made this channel, I made a promise to myself that even though I can have negative feelings about something, I'm not going to let it come onto my channel because that's not the vibe I'm going for. I don't want to talk about things I hate. I don't want to waste energy on things I despise and hate. That's what Twitter and pre-porn ban Tumblr is for. I only want to talk about things I love. I only ever talk about things I love. If something does disappoint me after I express my love for it, then I'll talk about that. But I'm gonna sit on it and think about what makes me upset rather than just saying, oh, this thing sucks. Because as far as I'm concerned, humans are on borrowed time on this planet and I'm not gonna waste it being angry for silly shit. I'm here to vibe until I die. So without further ado, I'm gonna talk about how excited I am for this reboot of Saints Row. First, I love this trailer so much. Let's start off with the new gen saints. First, we have Kevin, who looks amazing. The entire trailer, he gives off massive himbo energy. If you don't know what a himbo is, they're basically guys who are buff and who aren't the sharpest needles in the haystack at times, but they're generally a good time. Think Kronk, MCU, Thor, Ichiban Kostiga, the prince from Enchanted, etc. Kevin also rocks a digital cat mask helmet that's very Daft Punk. He kind of looks like a more muscular version of Mixer from Agents of Mayhem. When we found out that this was going to be a rebuild, I pretty much felt that there was going to be new characters and in a way, I was kind of hoping for that because I felt that having the same characters would just lead down to the same thing that people hate now about Saints Row. It's like when you're playing an RPG to do something different, but keep the same choices from your last playthrough. You're not really experimenting as much as you could have. So as much as I love Johnny Gat, I feel like Kevin is essentially his spiritual successor and I think he'll do a good job. He's also apparently a DJ who may have some connections to another gang that was named in the interview, The Idols. Next we see the boss, but I'm going to get into them later. For now, we see Nina, who instantly gives off this cool girl vibe. I'm not gonna lie, it was the glasses and the ponytail, but I got a Kinsey vibe from her, which we see is most likely not the case, and in the interview with Jim Boone, he mentions that. As we see in the trailer, she's the driver of the group, she knows how to fix cars, and she knows how to drive them. It's mentioned that she'd worked, or probably still works, as a mechanic for the Penteros. So in this, she could have been the one that maybe overheard about this deal. So in comparing them to the OGs, she's more along the line of Donnie. Edit, I watched RPG gameplays analysis and they mentioned the scorpion. Maybe it doesn't mean anything or maybe it does. In the case that it does, I looked up the symbolism behind scorpions and they generally represent guardianship, death, fertility, defensiveness, power, danger, and control. Another tidbit about Nina is that she was once studying to become an anthropologist, which is someone who studies human behaviors, cultures, and societies, which in a game series about gangs and their effect on the cities they run seems very fitting. <laughs> then we have Eli, who obviously comes off as the tech guy in the interview. He's mentioned to be the team's planner and is the one that mainly focuses on the startup aspects of getting their criminal empire underway. He's an MBA student and he's all about investment and basically he's the business sense of the group so he gives me Dex vibes. He's like Dex if he was more nerdy looking. He also gives me Malcolm vibes from Dope in his own way. Lastly, there is the boss. Obviously because they're meant to be your creative character, there's no known backstory or whatever for them because they're a stand-in for you. Side note, Bryce Charles is gorgeous. I do want to also mention how their outfits are very reflective of their personalities and individual lifestyles. Kevin is a DJ, so he's got the helmet. He's very more out there and bare about his getup. Eli is like this preppy nation of Islam looking guy. To me, he looks like the type of person that believes in the philosophy of dress smart, look smart or whatever that's or however that goes. Then Nina is more casual in a way that she comes off as more skater-ish or someone who knows they'll have to get their hands dirty so they aren't really extra with what they wear. Once again, the outlier is the boss because their style is dependent on you. To me, this is what helps make 
the grounded goofiness of Saints Row 2 work. Each of their outfits speaks more about their character on their own, and you can get a feel of how they might be. It gives off more of an authentic friend group type vibe, because like a lot of friend groups, no one has the same outfit. No one has the same aesthetic. I think it helps with the general vibes of the Saints. In my opinion, the real essence of the Saints is the no saint left behind attitude in many of the games. The Saints are a family unit and their quirkiness reminds me of the Belchers from Bob's Burgers. So I think there's an opportunity for a story where we can witness this new family unit growing to love each other. So before I talk about the gangs, I want to get into what the story premise is going to be, which will kind of put into more perspective what type of mechanics we'll have. So the premise is basically you and your ragtag group of friends want to start a criminal empire and it seems like the devs want to go more of a route where you have a more hands-on experience with running a gang more in-depth than just simply buying a business and waiting for the money to trickle in over time which seems fun and i'm interested to see what that entails i know a lot of people want street gangs but the fact is that even a lot of street gangs evolve with the times any sort of gangster organization in real life evolves, and that's due to the laws that become more strict and strike down at visible hints of gang activity. The best example of this is mob families. They don't operate in the open or they're not open about their connections as previously. A lot of families operate in a more quote unquote refined secrecy. And the same can be said for street gangs. A lot of street gangs either go legitimate or legitimate if you get what I'm saying. Saints Row has really always been a series that has kept up with the times and felt like a good reflection of what had a nice hold during that era. The best example being the whole dubstep had on Saints Row 3 and 4 because during that time, dubstep and this more mainstream appeal for the aesthetic of neon and cyberpunk was very much in. Of course, since then, it has become way more refined as a lot of people who are very into these aesthetics are more aware of how they want to present themselves. So it's not surprising that Saints Row still has some of this neon cyberpunk in its DNA, but it's probably more so catered to electronica and pop, kind of like in Ages of Mayhem. With figures like Daft Punk and Marshmallow, the rise of the style of masks and helmets, it's very fitting and makes sense that it's more contained to one group of people rather than the entire game. Another aspect of keeping up with the times is the game's whole self-made theme. We live in a time where everyone and their mama is trying to make their own business because they don't want to be slaves to minimum wage and shit work conditions. So the fact that this approach to the saints is along those lines is cool to me. The gangs that are going to be featured, at least for now, are as followed. There's the Penteros, who are muscle car enthusiasts that believe in brutal melee strength, so they kind of, so they feel like a combo of the Brotherhood and the Rollers. There's the Marshall Defense Industries, who are essentially a mercenary group in the same vein as the Meriwether Company from GTA. They are more gun heavy with their fighting. They've got like superior marksmanship and sci-fi weaponry. They're led by Doug Dimadome. We see that the Panteros have seemingly found a way to get a hand on some of their weapons in the trailer. Then there are the idols who are described as a, quote, group of kawaii cyberpunk anarchists. All I can imagine is Professor Genki multiplying, which makes it worse that their fighting style is to overwhelm you in a fight. Going back to when I mentioned how doing organized crime requires a lot more covertness, sort of, because this is Saints Row, people might be like, that idea doesn't make sense for the series. And yeah, that's a given because this series is all about doing the most. But I think that's where the martial defense comes into play. Rather than having harsher laws, the city could have attempted to strongly quell gang presence by welcoming their this, uh, this merc group into the city only to realize that they're also pretty much a gang but they run on the idea that they're keeping the others in check in order to justify their presence anywhere this city santo eleso which roughly translated means unscathed saint or unharmed saint so that's interesting the theme for the city is basically the weird west and there seems to be an inspiration for the four corners of america for the people that don't know the four corners is a region in the u.s in the southwest it basically consists of the southwest corner of Colorado, the southeastern corner of Utah, the northeastern corner of Arizona, and the northwestern corner of New Mexico. So it's going for that vibe in terms of location. From the little bits here and there featured, it seems really cool and vibrant and lively. I It already comes off differently than both Steelport and Steelwater, which really didn't have a lot of distinctness that made it them a city. 
that could be associated with an actual city so the elements and characters of the inspired city couldn't be pinpointed but from the interview Santo Eleso is going to be more distinct in that regard. There is a re there is reassurance that the essence of Saints Row will still be there. There is still an emphasis on fun and bombasticness but the goal is to get a Saints Row 2 experience with the graphics of Saints Row 3 and beyond which is something I've wanted for a long time. So for me, a lot of boxes have been checked. So I'm excited to hear that. All in all, it sounds like this reboot is going to be an entry that truly dives into the gang running aspect of Saints Row rather than solely picking a look for your boss and the general and general look of your gang. I'm super hyped for that and I hope we get an initiation station for this entry as well. Hopefully this video was like really short in order to edit and stuff because I didn't this is kind of even though like I have a script and everything written for it but that's just to get my thoughts properly articulated um this is kind of really a random video it wasn't really on my work in progress list basically just hold out just like I know as gamers well I'm gonna say it, gamers with a Z know that a lot of y'all don't just just like being angry for the sake of anger because that's kind of like the only feeling that has been allowed to prosper on the internet especially when it comes to youtube um but just relax be patient like you may be being so harsh on it only to find out that this is checking the boxes that you actually wanted so yeah again just be patient it's really not gonna kill you and if it ends up being disappointing to you then it's just gonna be disappointing okay you don't have to act like it's the end of the world the, the devil volition did not kill your dog enough for y'all to be act some of y'all be acting like this i'm just saying i know we all really love the series like it has been integral for a lot of our childhood it's made a lot of our childhoods mine especially but I'm gonna be frank with y'all. Some of y'all are too damn old to be doing all that. Let's make the most of the night. Like we're gonna die. 